Good morning everybody, got another pre-race uh, day video and so tomorrow is Hampton Court Palace. Now I've been on social media and a couple of people had reviewed the race from last year when we'd had quite a bit of uh, snow and a bit of rain uh, with the week leading up to it and a lot of people had mentioned how unhappy they were with the conditions of the uh, surface towards the end of the race that seemed to be quite kind of trail based and very muddy and it kind of got me thinking well what is this race like? Because whilst I know the area, I'm not that familiar with the, the route itself. Um, I believe it was going through housing estates and such. So um, I had a quick look on YouTube and there was a guy called Adam who was uh, kind enough to respond to me very, very quickly. He ran this race three weeks ago. Now I mentioned it before in a previous video that they, they had this half marathon taking place sort of four weeks apart with two different race organizers. It appears to be a very, very similar route. I'm not entirely sure why that is the case that they have two. Um, the one I'm doing is the seems to be the official uh, Palace Half Marathon and the one that was a couple of weeks ago seems to be uh, with a, a completely separate organisation that doesn't appear to be immediately linked to the Palace itself. And so anyway, he responded to me and he just uh, said, you know, road shoes the way to go. Um, I see in his video, thankfully he vlogged it, that it looks like towards the end there is um, kind of running across if you like a field or, or a grassed area, and I suppose that may well get cut up the further back in the pack you are, depending on whether you cross the line. Now there are six waves tomorrow. Uh, a couple of weeks ago when I received an email, it appeared there was only four waves, so they've obviously uh, either increased the number of people or they've in increased the um, number of waves uh, depending on the capacity in each wave. I seem to be in wave two, I don't really know why that is. Um, so I'll be going second in the uh, in the race when it starts. So the waves set off a couple of minutes apart as I say, I'm not really sure why I'm in wave two because when I booked it, I can't imagine I would have done anything with the timing other than kind of just put the, the I guess the slowest time available because at that time I hadn't really run a half marathon. I don't think I'd run one sub two, so I would never put a sub two time. Anyway, it doesn't really impact so much because I can just run it at my own pace. I'm not that not that worried, and if I feel comfortable at the start, I'll go with the flow. Like I say, I'm not not too uh, concerned about the idea of just uh, running it and enjoying it. And then after that, I'm looking to head out of the palace, which I believe you get um, a free pass into, which is quite cool. But whether I want to look around the palace in more race gear, I'm not sure, I feel a bit guilty, especially if it does get muddy. But I'll see how we get on. If it's uh, if everything kind of falls into place and I'll head around the palace as well, show you some of the sights there. But I'm gonna get there early, hopefully, so I can do a little bit of shooting. Um, around the, the venue itself, around the location. I'm really looking forward to it. We'll do a quick sort of um, kit look later on when I'm home. Uh, as I say, the weather at the moment is still a bit temperate. It was quite grey out there. It appears that today is going to be windy, a bit of rain overnight, and then tomorrow we've just got kind of sun and wind. But as I keep mentioning, and I hate to go on about it so much, uh, it just is it's so varied. It's really hard to get a measure on exactly what it's going to be like. Either way, I'm not going to be uh, running, I don't think, in any kind of rain gear. It's not going to be that bad. And uh, the, like I say, the temperature is pretty warm. It's about 12, 13 degrees. So, you know, I, skin, I think, dries a lot quicker <laughs> than uh, clothing does. I don't, I don't want it to be uh, weighing me down. So anyway, that's the plan. And then let's say tomorrow I'm going to try and uh, push for probably around 16 miles. So get the half done, head across the road and then uh, run around the local park there. That's the plan. I'll catch you later with the kit look. Okay, so I'm about to do the kit walkthrough. Weather report is definitely going to rain overnight. Tomorrow morning is going to be about six, seven degrees. At the moment, we've got winds of 25 miles an hour. So, um, yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting out there. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, race bib. A bit of an issue with that, though, because there are no... Uh, fasteners that come with it so I'm hoping that I've still got the fasteners from last week uh, this time the chip uh, timing is going to be attached to my shoe and not just to the bib which last week's one were what were was I've uh, got the Ron Hill Infinity Shorts Twin Skin Hilly Rimora Compression you know about that underwear Body Glide always a favourite I love this Wolf Run t-shirt I know I wore it last week but it's just oh, it's just brilliant okay Got myself the Ron Hill beanie, you know, it's trademark. Tailwind, I'm obviously not taking this huge bag, but what I was doing before was using the sachets. Now I found the flavor I like is actually much cheaper and simpler to buy the bigger bags and you just scoop it out. So that's going to be used tomorrow. Humor gels, got a little box of humors here. I'm not entirely sure which flavors yet, but 
got some bits and pieces going on there so I'll make a selection this evening now after your long run a lot of people say oh I'm using chocolate milk here is the replacement for chocolate milk if you are somebody on a plant-based diet you can use the for goodness shakes uh, I think it's vanilla chai and chocolate so this one's one of my favorites so 20 grams of protein people say to have the protein after run if you fancy uh, the chocolate milk and you don't want to be obviously taking it on board dairy then I suggest this a couple of the little treats I might have in the car for me these Trek uh, toffee triumphs are pretty cool these are tasty or you've got the option of greys or you've got these ones here nice uh, flapjack I've got the Lara bar which I mentioned before and I know people speak about having Haribo on the route and stuff like that if you're not interested in the Haribo uh, you can go with something like the Candy Kittens now I'm not taking most of this stuff with me tomorrow I'm definitely taking the Lara bar because I love Lara bar the rest of it is going to go to one side but I'm going to probably put it in the car just in case I feel a bit peckish after I run but that's the sort of kit walk through there it is and uh, I'm going to be using Brooks glycerin shoes tomorrow so I'm really excited but there you have it the kind of stuff I'm using tomorrow and as you saw at the end I threw in a couple of different uh, plant-based vegan treats that you could use as replacements if you are somebody who's looking at these forums like I am and you see different ideas of what people drink or eat after a race and I'm just thinking well I'm not gonna be having jelly babies I'm not gonna be having uh, chocolate milkshakes but there are a couple of replacement options for you there if you're interested at all. If you've not tried the products, I recommend going out at least having a little uh, little taster session on some of them to see if you like anything. But as I mentioned, I just kind of chuck them in the car sometimes. After a run, if I'm going back to the car, to just grab a, a little treat like that is always much, much simpler um, than trying to figure out what you're going to eat on the, well, at the location.